Hi, it's Chantelle here from Fiverrific. This is our last Tuesday tutorial of 2016. It's over. That, that's it. It's the end of the year. It's Christmas. I've got a Christmas shirt, a Christmas tree, Christmas presents, a Christmas hat. I told you I'd be more Christmassy by the end of the year, didn't I? Now I think before long this hat's going to drive me crazy. It's got a bell in it and it keeps jingling. So every, And I've realised how much I move my head when I talk. Who would have known? Oh, there it goes. Who would have known? Who would have known? Um, actually, the whole hands thing should have given away that my head moves as well. So, for the last Tuesday tutorial, I've teamed up with Jenny King from Jenny King Designs. She is this amazing crochet designer, huge in the US, but she's Australian and lives on the Sunshine Coast. And she is absolutely phenomenal. So what she has given us is one of her patterns. Now, Jenny has brought in her very first yarn. It's Jenny King Designs yarn. Now, the first thing I have to say, because I have to follow the YouTube rules, is I was not paid to do this. Jenny has paid me no money. However, she has sent some yarn so that we can play with her yarn for her pattern. So this yarn is called Fantasy and it is just beautiful. It's a slubby, like wrapped cotton and the cotton bits are mostly white with these gorgeous little flecks of pink and orange and green and and really it's just gorgeous and when I first touched it I was like oh this feels a little different it's not it's, it's like it's like hard but soft at the same time it's really hard to describe you won't know until you touch it but I have to say once I started using it I just I love it. I've, I've got all these ideas of all these things that I want to make with it and um, I've just realized there's little spots of purple in here too. There's so many colors in this ball of yarn. Anyway, it's 100 meters for 50 grams. It's um cotton and where are we? I'll read it. 60% cotton, 40% polyester. This is Jenny's first batch and as a present to us, she is giving us a discount. It's normally $8.80 a ball, but until the end of January, I'll confirm that and make a thing somewhere. Um, it's normally $8.80 a ball, but if we buy before the end of January, it will be $6.60 a ball. Now today's pattern is this gorgeous poncho. It's absolutely beautiful. And, and if you're big like me, you'll need four balls, but pretty well everyone else will just need the three balls. So we are going to make this step by step until it's just a case of just keep doing this until you use all your yarn. Okay, so the pattern will be in the link down below, um, which is free. You can just go and get it. And it's come out. I'm really happy with how it came out. I'll put some pictures up. So let's get started. The first thing that we do is we print out our, our Isadora pattern. It is linked, so you don't. It's a free pattern for us people here at Fiverrific on YouTube. We're very lucky Jenny gave it to us, and so I've printed mine out just a rough print, double-sided. So the instructions say that we need three balls and a 12 millimeter hook. I have an 11 and a half, which will be fine. Now you also need to make sure you have a, sti a lockable stitch marker because we do have to place it at a specific point. Now there are two options for this pattern. We can either go with the, um, the seamless or the seamed alternative. So we're gonna go with the seamless so that we have less work to do later. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do, I should have the instructions, is I'll make us some space. So we have our three balls of yarn, our hook, our, our lockable stitch marker, scissors and a weaving in needle now i think i tried weaving in on my other shawl uh, on my other top with just a normal weaving in needle and it was very difficult so try and get your hands on one of these really big ones um, they're not my favorite but this yarn that is quite slubby so if you happen to have to weave in on a big thick area it's easier if you've got a bigger eyed needle we don't need those for now so we're just going to do 30 chains so yarn over and 30 chain. Now there'll be areas where I just speed things up. You won't get to see everything. This is not a beginner class. So if you want to learn how to do a chain, you can go over to the chain and slip knot tutorial video. I'll put a 
I link up on the top right hand corner uh, we'll move on and we'll get to our 30 chains as quick as we can now I have found with this particular yarn that it's definitely easier to count the stitches in your head as you go rather than try and go back and count them later just because of how loopy it is I just found it did put me off a little bit so I do find that it's easier just to count them as I go and then stop place the marker and then keep going from there so I'm up to 10 30 okay so I'm up to 30 and the instructions say place a marker in the 30th chain so I'll grab my marker and I'll literally just pop it just through both those loops so that we've got our 30 and it's not going anywhere and it's on the 30th stitch so we know exactly what we're doing okay now the instructions say work another 45 chain so let's move on and count to 45 five okay so we've got 45 now what we need to do is we need to DC back into the marked chain so if we pull this out Here's our mark chain here. And we have to try not to twist it or anything silly like that. It's not too bad if you do, so don't panic too much. Lay our working yarn at the back and get it out of the way. Because the rest of the pattern calls for front loop only, when we're going to do these double crochets, we're just going to grab the top loop, okay? Just so that it matches the rest of the garment. Okay, so we've got the top loop there and the top loop in the next one over or front loop I should say rather than top loop front loop oops I'll bring my hands a bit closer and I, if you notice that I'm sort of helping the yarn along a little in this first row now believe me when I say it gets easier okay so as we get more of the garment done this gets easier because a you've gotten used to the yarn um, which is quite different than what I'm used to working with. I'm very much a, as some of you are aware, I'm very much a, um, I really like just um, even yarns, but oh, geez, I had so much fun working with this that it may have just changed my mind. Okay, so we just keep working in these little top loops all the way across to the end we want 29 of them okay so just work across until you've got your 29 top loops and don't let the big chunky bits fool you they'll try and tell you that they're always the top loop but they aren't always Now we're getting up towards the end here and then what we'll do is we'll go back and count our stitches to make sure we've got 29 stitches and then our marker which is our 30th stitch all right so we've made it to the end now we're just going to go back and double check that we've got 29 stitches between here and here okay so so it's a bit tricky to tell so you have to just sort of pull them apart a little so you've got one that's two three Four. okay so we've got our 29 forms a loop with a tail so then what we have to do is we need to turn our work so move everything to this side and turn our work and go we're going to be going into the stitch we just made okay so then row two says chain one then one DC into the front loop of each DC now in we go and we do that all the way around so we want front loop so I'm not sure if you can see here 
but see how there's two loops there's a bottom one and the top one the top one is generally the front one if you can't tell just give it a little tug and you should be able to see it a bit better because we've got such big loops going on it does make it a little bit tricky sometimes but again because of the open and loopy nature of this it's not that big a deal if you grab the wrong one as long as you have one of them and you haven't flipped it the work you should be pretty well right so you just got to make sure that you're working on the same edge and we do this all the way around except for the last stitch the last the very last stitch is just slightly slightly different you go through both the loops but I'll show you how to do that when we get there what I tend to do is there is a, a stitch count at the end of this row um, of 105 what I tend to do is grab a pile more stitch markers and then as I'm making the next round every 20 stitches I tend to just chuck in a marker just because it is a bit awkward because I'm not used to dealing with such loopy loopy yarn we just keep going we're going to go up and around our loop that we made okay so I'm hitting the marker just make sure I just grab the top loop now I personally just leave the marker in I actually didn't take mine out until I was ready to weave the ends in of my first one that I made now we just need to make sure we've got our loop separated out and we're just grabbing the top of the loops just like we did when we did the initial side going down so we just make sure we grab one of each of our loops so generally that I try to grab the top one just for continuity but as long as you're grabbing the same one it doesn't actually matter now we're coming back up to this marker so see how we, the marker is there because we went that way first now we're coming back down we need to make sure that we're working on the other side okay so where we put our double crochets before the first row of double crochets now again just make sure you're grabbing that top loop or the front loop oops just make sure you're grabbing the front loop and the front loop you can tell it which one it is because it goes in front it goes in front of the strand that comes down so the loop you want is this one here it comes in front of this strand that comes down but as I said before it actually doesn't matter too much as long as you just grab one um, because of the nature of this fabric and the nature of this yarn it's very forgiving if you happen to grab the wrong one now if you had a much more smooth yarn in a solid color or actually just generally a smooth yarn I think it would be less forgiving I think this pattern really lends itself to textured yarns just making sure we're grabbing the front loop all the way back down to the end and because this is all working into the DC's that we put in before it's actually a lot easier than working into the initial chains so this is the first time we've gotten to work into our actual tops of DC's that we did for the end of row one okay now I'm coming up to the the last one where our little knot is now in our last stitch we need to actually we need to make it a bit more stable so we want to grab both loops so see how I've got two loops on the top of the hook here so I've got the, the chain from the beginning and the two loops yarn over and draw through now yarn over and draw through so and then do that again now that is the end of round two now believe it or not you've done the hardest part of this entire garment now we're on to row three now for this row as I do each 20 stitches I'll pop in a marker and just double check that I've got my 105 stitches now I'm not going to do this for the camera so for the hundred and uh, if you're off by one or two stitches I wouldn't worry about it but if you're off by a lot I would probably pull back and double check where you're at round three is literally chain one and then <clears throat> one DC into the front loop of every stitch so you chain one 
So what we do, I'll just flip this over, you can see, chain one and then a DC in every stitch all the way up and around the loop and down the bottom, then turn your work and then the next row is chain th row three again. So row three in essence is the same as row two and you just keep doing this. You just keep going until you get to, um, I think the pattern says row 33. I needed more because of my bigger size. I went till I got to the end of four balls and then you tie it off and that is it my friends. That is it. That is how we make that beautiful, beautiful solder top. What did you think of that? Did you like that pattern? I really enjoyed making this pattern. Once I got going, I was so much faster and it was all done. I think if I hadn't have had a couple of days off, I've had a really sore shoulder. So if I hadn't had a couple of days off crocheting, I probably could have gotten it done like a ball a night for the four nights. I really enjoyed it and I've already planned out some other patterns that I want to make using this yarn. And I really appreciate Jenny for making it possible for us to do the entire pattern, which I think is just super. Thank you so much for watching these videos this year. It's made a huge difference for me, um, both for Fiberific and for myself. I've really enjoyed making these videos. I do have moments of self-doubt, uh, as we all do, but I've just really loved making them, so I'm so glad that you're enjoying watching them. Have a Merry Christmas, and it's time for you to fill your universe with fiber fun. Off you go, and I'll see you next year. Bye!